Hello, I am uh, Dr. Brett May. Uh, I am the vice chair and incoming chair of surgery. Um, and we wanted to get together to try to clarify some information regarding the new COVID vaccine. Um, we as medical staff leaders came together recently and wanted to clear up some information as we've been hearing about some misinformation or false information out in the community. Uh, we've been seeing it on social media. We wanted to clarify and make sure everybody has good information to help make them make a decision regarding the vaccine. So the vaccine works, uh, or vaccines work in many different ways. Uh, most older vaccines work by taking a piece of the virus and inactivating it so that your body reacts to the actual virus. This is a new type of vaccine. And I think everyone's heard that it's new. Um, it's called a mRNA vaccine or a messenger uh, RNA vaccine. And this is a, a new technology that's been developed for this particular virus. Um, the nice thing about this type of vaccine is it can be manufactured and uh, distributed very rapidly. But because it's new, there are obviously are concerns. I was very concerned about it, so I did a lot of research. Um, and what I discovered is, is that this vaccine does not uh, get incorporated into your genetic material or into your DNA. It does not change your genes. It does not change your cells. Um, that's a, uh, one of the, the rumors I've heard uh, and seen on social media. Uh, now, one thing to note is that the RNA doesn't stay in your cell long term. Once it makes the protein, it's degraded and is destroyed. So again, nothing stays in your body long term. The vaccine cannot give you COVID-19. Uh, it absolutely has no part of the actual virus. It only has some genetic code for the spike protein. Um, it can cause some mild reactions. All of the uh, medical staff leaders here have received the vaccine. And it was like the flu uh, vaccine, it causes a little bit of uh, discomfort with any injection. I had a little soreness in the muscle the next day and then that was gone within 24 hours. I experienced no fever, no fatigue, no headaches, uh, no respiratory symptoms. Most patients that have been studied and approximately 35 to 40,000 patients have been studied now in the US, uh, almost all of them only had the mild symptoms of some mild um, uh, discomfort, some mild fatigue, maybe a low-grade fever for 24 hours, and that was about it. As Dr. May mentioned, the new technology that is used uh, to come up with this vaccine, mRNA uh, technology is really not new. It's been around uh, uh, in the field of cancer, so it's actually not new. Now, when it comes to coming up with a vaccine, in the field of vaccine, it is new, but the other question that people always ask is, well, it usually takes a long time to come up with a vaccine. How did they come up with this one so quickly? So people get very suspicious. The reason is because this is a world pandemic. We've never seen this before. So all the labs working with mRNA in the field of cancer stop and start working toward coming up with a vaccine. The money that's been poured into this is tremendous. As a result, money is not a factor. Scientists all over the world have dedicated their time to this. That's why we came up with this vaccine so rapidly. As Dr. May mentioned, the old technology where we use uh, viruses uh, to, to penetrate the cells with, with, uh, uh, so that our cells can start producing uh, antibody against uh, uh, certain uh, pathogens. That technology takes, takes a while to, to come up with a vaccine using that technique. This new technique, in fact, may even be safer than the old technique. I took the vaccine uh, about three days ago, and my arm was sore uh, 24 hours after the vaccine, and after that, I've had no symptoms. Other symptoms that you hear about, uh, headaches, I had none. A uh, small percentage of folks may get fever as if you have like a cold. I didn't experience any of that. And the hospitalist group have taken the vaccine. And we actually have a WhatsApp survey trying to query them and see if anybody has had any side effects. And we have not heard anything other than just a sore arm. So I think the vaccine has been well tolerated. And I actually have no concern. Uh, 
as Dr. May also mentioned, is that the, the, the studies have been published. And, and after reviewing them, I felt very comfortable taking the vaccine. If I had a safety concern, I wouldn't have taken the vaccine. And uh, in fact, I, I, I spoke with many physicians, including the staff at my office. Early on, I told them, look, I'm going to review the data. If I'm satisfied with it, I will take it. And, and, and that's what I did, and I'm satisfied with it in terms of the side effect profile and the efficacy of the vaccine. I think everybody hear about the efficacy of the vaccine, which is far above what we would expect of vaccines in general, right? But I was mainly concerned about the side effects. And uh, it can be as effective as, as, as they say it is, but if, if you get very sick from it, then, then really that kind of uh, is a mute point. So I'm satisfied with the efficacy and, and the side effect profile, and that's why I took it myself. Hi, I'm Dr. Sumi King. I'm an OBG, and I work in the obstetrical emergency department here at United Regional. Uh, I did get my vaccine on Saturday, right after I finished a 24-hour shift. I was asked to wait 30 minutes because I was one of the lucky people who have had a reaction to a shot before. When I had allergy testing, I reacted to ragweed. So I waited there for 30 minutes in my car and I had no problems. After that, my arm got a little sore. I've not had a fever, I've not had a headache and I went about my usual activities. The American College of OB-GYN has released an advisory that states that pregnant women and lactating women, women who are breastfeeding, should not be withheld the vaccine if they are in the category of patients who qualify for the vaccine. At this time, the American College feels that the vaccine is perfectly safe for pregnant women, lactating women, and it does not affect future fertility. And the reason why we feel that way is because, as Dr. May previously mentioned, the messenger RNA segment that is used in this vaccine to allow us to create antibodies to protect us from this disease will be degraded eventually. At this point, the studies have shown that the Pfizer was, vaccine was tested in 35,000 patients. That's a huge number for a single study. And the number of Allergic reactions was typical for most vaccines. If you have had an allergic reaction, they will ask you to wait 30 minutes. They may want you to preload with some Benadryl, 50 milligrams before you go. I personally took some Tylenol before I went because I wanted to make sure my local reaction wasn't too bad. They may also want to have an EpiPen available. Uh, if you have had bee sting allergies, things like that, then you're familiar with what an EpiPen is. But there are treatments for those people who have an allergic reaction. So when we develop an initial vaccine, they're gonna test it in adults first. It's fairly unethical to do it in pregnant women and children initially. The next phase of testing will include those. And but thus far in the adult women that have taken the vaccine, there's not been any effect on their reproductive systems. There have been no side effects seen. I'm David Flack, uh, pathologist, been on staff at this hospital uh, quite a number of years. And uh, uh, my colleagues, uh, uh, Dr. May, Dr. Desiree, Dr. King, I really could not articulate better the points that they have made. I would want to emphasize that uh, once again, you're not rece receiving the virus in this vaccine. You're receiving a product that will uh, create a protein that you'll create an antibody against that will prevent the virus from uh, infecting the cell and, you and coming down with the disease. Um, <clears throat> I did want to also address one point Dr. Desiree made uh, about how fast the vaccine came to market. Uh, there was a lot of science, a lot of effort, a lot of money put into this. The only disease of recent, well, uh, the only disease that uh, you can really compare this to is the Spanish flu of 1918. That was a worldwide pandemic, but we did not have the resources, we did not have the science, we did not have the expertise to react to it like we have today. Uh, I feel perfectly safe with it. I too have received the vaccine uh, on a scale of uh, one to 10, uh, with one to no side effects, 10, strong side effects, 
I was literally a one. Um, I had an injection, minimal soreness in the arm, absolutely no other side effects whatsoever. Regarding individuals that uh, have had a documented case of COVID, um, the vaccine is not contraindicated in that case. We don't know how long uh, immunity lasts from having the disease. Uh, people uh, should go ahead and get the vaccine. That, uh, again, is not a contraindication. Uh, we don't know how long that immunity is going to last for those that uh, have had the disease. Those that have had a mild case, studies tend to show that they have detectable antibodies at low levels and those levels disappear very quickly. What that means, we're not certain, but the bottom line is we still encourage those folks to take the vaccine. We need to continue the precautions that, that, that we're taking. Um, <clears throat> uh, you may have received a little bit of protection uh, uh, or protection when you've taken the vaccine and gotten the booster, but uh, we need to protect those around us and uh, we need to continue to wear our masks. We need to continue to social distance. This is, this is a great tool to get us on the road to eliminating this pandemic, uh, but we can't be cavalier about it and suddenly uh, after you get your vaccine that you quit wearing a mask, that you're uh, in close social gatherings, uh, those precautions still need to be taken so that we can utilize all of these tools, including the vaccine, to try to eliminate this sooner rather than later and get back to life as we would like to have it. We wanted to come together again to help everyone have good information. Um, again, with all the rumors and social media out there, sometimes it's hard to know what is the truth and what is correct. Um, obviously, if you have any questions, you should talk to your physician. Um, you can approach any of us. Um, we can get uh, questions answered for you. Uh, we're happy to help in any way we can. Uh, additionally, you can do some of your own research, and I would encourage you to, but I would encourage you to do it through trusted websites. Uh, some of these websites are uh, the CDC website has excellent information regarding the vaccine. You can actually go to the FDA website and actually see the actual documents the FDA reviewed uh, for these vaccines. Uh, so I would encourage everyone to do your research, talk to your physicians, listen to your medical leaders. Uh, again, I was very concerned about this. I was concerned about long-term side effects. And after doing the research, I am now extremely comfortable with this. Um, again, I, uh, all of our medical staff leaders here that spoke today have received it, um, some of which are very conservative and need a fair amount of convincing to make sure something's safe before they will endorse it. Uh, I can't imagine a better gift at this time uh, to give us hope, uh, for us to see the light at the end of the tunnel uh, and see the end uh, of this pandemic coming.